Smash Drunk. So far, I've looked at Batman games, Battletoads games, so now it's Spider-Man's turn. The first Super Nintendo game featuring Spider-Man was Spider-Man and X-Men in Arcade's Revenge, where the X-Men are taken captive by the crazy-ass supervillain Arcade. First, Spider-Man has to rescue Wolverine, then Wolverine rescues Cyclops, on and on one at a time. You do play the most as Spider-Man though, assuming you get all the way through this ridiculously tough game. The platforming is good enough, it's especially fun to play as Spider-Man, climbing walls and stuff. You'll find that to be a recurring theme in this video, believe it or not. One thing that stands out here is how frickin' weird this game looks. If they were going for a crazy aesthetic to match the villain's personality, they may have outdone themselves, because this is a frickin' mess. The music is also a weird fit. I like it, but it's just not what I would have expected. Also, one nitpick I have as a Gambit fanboy, his weapon sucks. Come on, who tosses playing cards like the rocks like that? That's terrible. Anyway, this also came out a couple years later on the Genesis, but the levels are all exactly the same, so the only difference is how it sounds and looks, based on the different hardware. Spider-Man and X-Men in Arcade's Revenge is just a slight notch above okay. It's certainly not a classic, but it's not bad either. Next we have Spider-Man and Venom in Maximum Carnage, perhaps more famously known as one of the two red Super Nintendo cartridges. And yeah, if you want a red cart for your Super Nintendo collection, get this one instead of Doom. This is a classic side-scrolling beat-em-up with a few other levels thrown in for variety, like climbing buildings and web-slinging around the city. The visual presentation and structure of this game is as good as any comic book game I've ever played. It's really good. The pixel art lends itself so well to the comic format that it makes me wish other games did this too. However, despite the title, Maximum Carnage is single player only, so that seriously hampers the replay value here. You do eventually get the option of picking between Spidey and Venom for a few stages at a time, so that's nice. I've heard that the ending differs depending on who you finish the game with, but this game got so hard and so frustrating that I never found out for myself. But yeah, if you're a fan of the Spider-Man comic, this is the game to get, because holy crap, they shoehorned as many characters as they could think of into this game. And also I gotta mention the soundtrack to this game was written and produced by the band Green Jelly. You know, the guys who did the song about the three little pigs? So yeah, the soundtrack really sounds fantastic. My only criticism about the gameplay is that the beat-em-up mechanics are a bit limited. I'd like a few more special moves, like in Final Fight, how Hagar has the pile driver and Cody has the spinning kick. Sure, Spidey can sling around, but it's really just to avoid stuff more than anything. They do have a token system where random superheroes show up to help you, but I would have liked something a little more in the form of a move from Spider-Man himself. Either way, this is an excellent game and one of the better beat-em-ups on the Super Nintendo. It's also worth mentioning really quick that this game was also released on Genesis, but it's pretty much the exact same game. Then we have Venom and Spider-Man Separation Anxiety. Kind of a goofy title, but whatever. And that's a direct sequel to Maximum Carnage. This game is multiplayer and allows you to pick between Spider-Man and Venom from the very beginning of the game, so there's an improvement. However, this game really feels half-assed compared to its predecessor. The comic panels and kick-ass pixel art are reduced to just text, and the Spider-Man and Venom sprites look kind of flat. I mean, just look at Venom's tongue just lifelessly hanging out of his mouth. What is he, gnawing on a jalapeno or something? The combat also feels a bit flat flimsy by comparison, and you've got the same enemies as the first game. Separation Anxiety just feels like a blatant cash-in, you're way better off playing Maximum Carnage. That's as simple as I can sum up this game. I mean, it almost seems like Maximum Carnage is the sequel to Separation Anxiety because that game does just about everything better, like they took time to improve each and every aspect after doing a mediocre job, but in reality it's the exact opposite. Weird. The one advantage Separation Anxiety has is that it's multiplayer, so I guess if you really need a multiplayer Spider-Man beat-em-up, then there you go. Next we have Spider-Man the Animated Series, or simply Spider-Man as the box says. This game is more of an action platformer that reminds me of the first X-Men game for Genesis with Spidey's range of motion and the large level layout. Am I alone in thinking the Spider-Man sprite here is just funny looking? I mean he looks like a 5'3 guy that compulsively bench presses things. Anyway, this game is just okay. The controls are a little awkward to get used to, and you have a limited amount of spiderweb to fling around. That's kind of an annoying handicap to work with. There's six large levels to traverse through, so you get plenty of opportunities to do all the classic Spider-Man stuff. Again, there's a huge cast of characters from the Spider-Man universe that show up, and FYI, this is mainly where the Super Nintendo and Genesis versions of the game differ. Some characters will overlap, but for the most part, there's different people in different games. Again, I want to point out the music and sound here are very good. It seems like they are in every Spider-Man game for some reason. The music in particular here is a bit goofier and off-kilter, kind of like Spider-Man and X-Men in Arcade's Revenge, but it fits the game just fine. I like this game better than Separation Anxiety because the visuals and comic storytelling are much better and help give this game some life to it. I'd still much rather play Maximum Carnage though. 
Last, we have a game exclusive to the Super Famicom, The Amazing Spider-Man Lethal Foes. And right off the bat, check out the cover art here. Now that is frickin' badass. And yeah, staying on that theme, this game is fantastic looking, on the same level as Maximum Carnage with sharp colors and fluid animation. The controls, however, are pretty strange and hard to get used to. You hold the R button as you press X to traverse across rooftops, but it's not as easy as it sounds because it's easy to flail out of control at any second. Also, this game is very easy. Spider-Man can take a ton of damage and the enemies are total pushovers, including the bosses. Speed is the name of the game here though, as you gotta reach checkpoints before the time runs out. However, that's also pretty dang easy to do as well. So yeah, this game might be a neat curiosity on the surface, but the controls are just too awkward and the game is way too easy for it to be anything more than a novelty. It's pretty easy to get bored with this one quickly. Anyway, that wraps it up for Super Nintendo Spider-Man games, and as you might expect, I'd pick Maximum Carnage as the best game of the bunch. Its comic book layout of the story is really cool, the soundtrack is kick-ass, and as far as traditional 16-bit beat-em-ups go, it's better than average. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!